The Lord be with you. Listen to the good news as proclaimed in the Holy Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 14, beginning at the 25th verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. Luke 14, verse 25 to 33. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me, cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. This is the gospel of Christ. We bow our heads in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please do be seated. I must confess, I feel a little bit nervous this morning. It's been about five weeks since I've been in the pulpit on a Sunday morning, so I hope I still have my groove to reflect uh, aptly that which God calls us to reflect on. Words from our gospel this morning. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Friends, it was 13 Sundays ago that we celebrated the Feast of Pentecost, the outpouring of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it was Pentecost Sunday which led us into this season, the season of ordinary time. And it's in the season of ordinary time that we are invited to witness afresh the manifestation of God through the teachings of Jesus Christ. It is in ordinary time that through the words and deeds of Jesus Christ, That we are called to grow in our individual faith, but also to grow as a faith community. And so with only 11 or 12 Sundays to go before we enter the season of Advent, today is probably a very good time to evaluate our growth journey. Where are we on our personal journey? faith journey compared to where we were on Pentecost Sunday? Where are we today as a community of faith in relation to where we were on Pentecost Sunday? Have we used these past 13 Sundays to grow? Or are we simply still in the same place that we were three months ago? when we celebrated the outpouring of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Today we encounter a teaching which I'm sure for many of us is really challenging. A teaching around the cost of discipleship. 
again, it was on Pentecost Sunday where I themed my sermon. And I'm tempted to ask you what, what was the theme of my sermon on Pentecost Sunday, but I understand the age gets the better of us, so we might not remember. But on Pentecost Sunday, I themed my sermon moving from pain to purpose. Moving from pain to purpose. And it's really the Sundays after Pentecost, the Sundays which followed Pentecost Sunday, which ought to have challenged us as to how it is that we move from pain to purpose. And so as we reflect on our growth over the past few months, that is what we are called to respond to this morning. Have we moved from pain to purpose? Have we moved from pain to purpose? Which brings me to the text we just heard this morning, where we hear Jesus saying, Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Again, the cross, a symbol of pain. The call to follow Jesus, a reminder of our purpose. And so in being called to discipleship, in called to, being, to follow Jesus, We are invited again on this journey from pain to purpose. As we reflect and evaluate our growth, let us reflect on whether or not we have carried our cross. And if we have carried our cross, have we carried our cross with sorrow or with joy? Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. And so, of course, it will do us good to just pause for a moment and reflect on what is the cross that we are called to carry. What is the cross that you are called to carry? In our personal life, is it the cross of unemployment? Is it the cross of broken relationships? Is it the cross of depression or sadness? Is it the cross of anger or illness? What is the cross you are called to pick up so that you can follow Jesus? As part of this faith community, What is the cross you are called to carry? Is it the cross of being able to adapt to change? Is it the cross of not feeling welcome or part of this parish? Is it the cross of gossip or slander? Is it the cross of hurt and pain? Is it the cross of simply not being able to offer yourself to God and God's church because you are afraid of what the people might say? What is the cross that you need to carry as part of this faith community to follow Jesus? You see, our text today is indeed one where Luke outlines the true cost of discipleship. And at the heart of that cost of discipleship lays the challenge that those who are not carrying a cross, those who are not carrying their cross, cannot be disciples of Jesus. Those who are not ready to move from pain to purpose cannot be disciples of Jesus. It's that famous German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer who in his book called The Cost of Discipleship draws the important link between grace 
and discipleship, as I hope to draw this morning between pain and purpose. But it's in this writing of Bonhoeffer where he speaks of grace and he separates grace into two parts. He starts to speak of cheap grace and costly grace. And as you can well imagine, very often as a people of faith, we choose cheap grace simply because it's a lot easier and it makes us feel good. Bonhoeffer says, cheap grace is grace without discipleship. It is grace without the cross. Cheap grace, he says, is grace without Jesus Christ. In other words, cheap grace is expecting to move from pain to purpose without healing our wounds. Cheap grace is moving from pain to purpose without seeking forgiveness or even offering forgiveness. Cheap grace is choosing to move on without resolving the conflict. And here's the punchline. Cheap grace is saying I am a Christian when I fail to love my neighbor as I love myself. Cheap grace is carrying the cross of pain instead of carrying the cross of purpose. Cheap grace is carrying the cross of pain instead of carrying the cross of purpose. As a people of faith, as pilgrims on a journey, as disciples of Jesus Christ, friends, you and I have a duty to God and to God's church. We cannot continue to lay in the pains of the past. God has a purpose for each of us as we gather here today. And yes, that purpose involves and invites us to carry our cross. But I want to remind you that the cross we carry has to be a cross that leads us to the gift of the resurrection. Shall I say that again? The cross we carry has to be the cross that leads us to the resurrection. If you recall the Easter story, the story of the crucifixion and death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, The Easter story does not end with a Jesus being crucified to a cross. The Easter story is not about the pain and the suffering that takes place on Good Friday. The Easter story is not even about the empty dark tomb that Jesus is laid in to rest. But instead the Easter story comes to life with a gift of the resurrection. The Easter story comes to life with the raising up of Jesus through God's love. Now Jesus' resurrection cannot happen without the cross. Without the cross there is no new life. And so when we are called to pick up our cross or to carry our cross It should not be a cross that keeps us burdened. It should not be a cross that keeps us sad and despaired. It should not be a cross that keeps us in a place of suffering or darkness. But when we pick up our cross and we follow Jesus, it must be a cross that leads us to new life. It must be a cross that leads us 
to a resurrection experience. The grace of enjoying newness with God through God's Son, Jesus Christ. As a parish, we have an opportunity to embrace new and different things. As a parish, we have the space and privilege of expressing our faith as a community without any limitations. We come as we are and we offer ourselves to God and God's church simply to be. As a parish community here at St. Saviour's, we have the wonderful opportunity to praise the name of God and to make God known to all people. But first, first we must move from pain to purpose. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Let's leave the cross of pain behind and pick up the cross of purpose. The cross that leads each of us to the gift of the resurrection. Friends, today as we come to the Eucharist, as we come and receive Jesus Christ in body and in blood, we have an opportunity to visibly move from pain to purpose. This morning, as you choose to rise up from your pews and make your way to God's altar, I invite you to do so in faith. I invite you that as you rise up from your pews and walk towards God's altar, that you acknowledge your pain. Acknowledge the cross of pain that you might be carrying. And when you get to God's altar, leave your cross of pain at the altar. Leave the cross of pain at the foot of the cross. And when you receive the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ, I pray that that may be a symbol of you receiving your cross for purpose. And as you turn from the altar and sit back in your pews, towards the end of the service, you'll be hearing the words, go out into the world to love and serve the Lord. We can only go out into God's world to love and serve God if we leave our pains behind and are ready to live out our purpose. You can only go out into God's world to love and serve God if today you choose to leave the cross of pain behind and pick up the cross of purpose. For you see, we don't simply just leave our cross behind. We carry our cross because that's what Jesus invites us to do. Jesus invites us to pick up the cross and to follow him. But the cross we carry is not a cross of perpetual or everlasting suffering and pain. The cross we carry is a cross that invites us into new life. And so as we go out into God's world carrying our cross for purpose, we step out boldly as a new people. A people who have again experienced the grace and love of God. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Amen. May we be a shining light to the nations, a shining light to the peoples of heaven, to the whole world sees the glory of your name. Bring a word of hope to the nations, a word of love to the people.
Yeah. 